is that most people are aware the kinds of organic matter that farmers can add to soil will give them nutrients, particularly nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium. But we think it's also important for a number of other reasons. It can improve soil structure. Um, that can translate into reductions in fuel consumption by a tractor which has got to pull a uh, tillage implement through the soil. Uh, it can help the, the, the water to drain out of soil um, and when, the, when the soil is, is wet and paradoxically it can help hold on to water when the soil is dry. So it's good all round from that point of view. This can translate into extra days of trafficability so that you can get onto the land for longer during wet seasons such as the one we've just had. And it can also help air to penetrate into the soil which is good for the, the soil organisms in general and the soil health. But on the subject of soil organisms, of course, what we think of are organic matter, those nutrients that are in there, that they're for feeding plants and feeding the crop. But they also have the benefit of feeding the organisms which are in soil, not just microorganisms and fungi, but you can also think of things like earthworms, which move about in the soil and create a, a better habitat for themselves. And of course, in doing so, what they're, what they're doing is creating a better environment for the crop to send its roots into soil and explore and find water and, and nutrients. So we think that by adding organic matter to soil and improving the structure, we're actually helping to increase yields. And we've shown that with some field experiments at Rothamsted over the last few years. Well, we're making use of some of the long-term field experiments at Rothamsted, which have been running for more than 160 years. And these experiments were set up originally to test the effects of nutrients on, on, on plants. And in fact, to prove or, or, or get evidence for a, um, an old controversy about whether plants got their nitrogen from the air or from the soil. And it was in fact shown, of course, that the plants get the, the, the nitrogen in the main um, from, from the soil, the um, non-leguminous plants, that is. But uh, these experiments were kept going, and now after 160 years or so, we're still finding use for them. So some of the plots that we've been investigating have been having farmyard manure treatments for all that period of time, and we can contrast these with adjacent plots, which have had no uh, organic matter inputs over that period of time, and we can look at things like the life in the soil and the structure and, um, and, and how well the, the crops grow. So the farm manager said he could hear the difference in the, uh, the, the noise that the tractor was making, um, from some distance away as it was moving from the high organic matter plots to the low organic matter plots and this set us thinking so we developed an implement that, or a sensor that could sit between the plough and the tractor and measure the forces in the, the takeoff from the plough and we used this to map how the draft forces varied across uh, some of our long-term experiments. And what we found was, was quite interesting, not especially what we were expecting, but we found that, it, that the plots which had, had got a, a lot of organic matter, yes they had lower draft than, than plots that had had none in the history. But the plots that had had a little bit from crop residues and things like that had quite low draft forces too, almost as low as those with the very high rates of organic matter. So the conclusion we drew from this really was that a little organic matter can go a long way. If you've got soils which are a bit deficient in organic matter, it's well worth trying to improve the structure by adding some. Well, we've been lucky enough to secure a bit of funding from HGCA, or quite a lot of funding from HGCA actually, to look at improving structure by adding soil organic matter. So we're going to add different kinds of organic matter, test uh, whether straw is as effective for farmyard manure or anaerobic digestate or compost, and indeed some mixtures of these, these um, materials. And then we're putting them on at different rates, and we want to see which rate gives the best uh, additional response to, to the uh, organic matter, the best increase in yield. And we will be investigating the changes in soil structure over time. Well, bag products are very good, you know what you've got, it, it's, it does what it says on the tin really. With uh, organic matter additions you probably need to make an analysis and, and some, of what, some of the nutrients that it contains aren't readily available. So you need to be aware of what material you're putting in because different materials will have a lot more readily available nitrogen than others. But of course the, the, the stuff that's not readily available will build up, will accumulate in soil to some extent. So you're building up fertility for the long term, which of course, as every farmer knows is a very valuable thing. We would encourage farmers to apply organic matter but certainly to take account of any nutrients it might contain because obviously you don't want to be uh, over uh, exceeding NVZ limits or anything of that kind. But of course it can save money if the, the, the organic matter contains nutrients. There can be a saving in fertilizer applications. But having said that, the organic matter we hope would, would uh, encourage or, or improve the health of the soil and um, we would hope to, to see some yields and we will be evaluating different organic matter 
uh, additions over the next few years and different rates of, of addition. And I hope that in, a, in three or four years' time, I might be able to give a more def definitive answer on what you need or what a farmer needs.